this short video, I'm going to start looking at one of the most important aspects of Vectorworks drawing, and that is class use. Um, when I teach Vectorworks for 2D work, um, one of the first things I do is try to explain the use of class and why it is so important. Um, the first thing to do, really, I suppose, is to um, have a look at where your class tools are. Now, if you're on fundamentals, this is the only way to do it. If you're an architect, then um, the navigation palette and clicking on the first tab at the top will show you all the classes that are available. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'll shut down the navigation palette and we'll go into... Oh, I've still got up my Vantage Point Cartographics worksheet. So let's quickly um, take that out and go up to the Architects worksheet. And that's going to be another lesson, by the way, um, how to use um, the different worksheets that we can, we can use, which is different areas and different menu systems. And believe me, it does come in handy when you've got um, a lot of plugins. Anyway, we're back to Architect. And let's open that up and go into Organize and have a look at the classes that I happen to have. Now, as you can see, I've got just absolutely loads. And just take a look at my tree classes. I haven't got just one class of tree. I've got tree branches, branch with no infills, canopies, center points, infill one, green gradient infills, all sorts of different infills, brown gradient infills, the cherry, cherry with flowers, all sorts of bits. and Really, let's just have a look at one and have a look. And let's just go to the tree canopy. And if I double click on that, it brings up the edit box for it. And you can see always use at creation. So as soon as I click on this particular uh, class, it will always be used. I have no fill, but I in the in the center of any object that I, I create. But the line, the pen line itself is a solid. And I've used this colour for it. In the words, it's a green canopy. I've used a 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.13 pen thickness. And I've no markers on it at all. So that defines, basically, anything that I draw with that class as being belonging to that class. Now, it means I can turn it off if I don't particularly want to see it, both in the design layer and, more importantly, in the, in the viewport on my sheet layers. Now this is hugely important because if you're doing a drawing and you don't particularly want to see certain items, I can easily turn them off if they're classed correctly, like text, certain styles of text, lines for say foundations or timber joists, anything like that, I can create new drawings just by turning on and off the class within that viewport. Also, when I'm drawing as well, uh, and, and let's see if I can bring up um, an, a recent one that I've done, let's say Elm Farm, which is a job that I've just done quite recently. And there you can see is the, um, is the proposed elevations. And let's just go down to the proposed ground floor. Now, as you can see there, it's not too cluttered. Um, I've got a lot of spec notes on there. So perhaps I don't particularly want to see the spec notes at all. So what I might do is to um, go into my navigation, into the class, and look for, and if I enter T, it'll take me straight down to the text, and I think I should have one for specification. So if I click in the center column, it will remove all the, um, the text. Now, if I want to get rid of the arrows as well, and there is one for arrows, and I only have one there, but I can turn them off quite easily. So you see how easy it is to um, manipulate a drawing so that it suits the requirements that you're trying to show your contractor or client. And sometimes you just don't want all the clutter on, you just want um, a basic drawing. Um, so I'll put the arrows back on again. And also, if I press T and go down to the bottom again, there we have um, text specification. I'll put those all back on again. Now, I can do this independent of each other. So not only can I do it on the design sheet, but I can do it on the viewport as well. And if I go to my proposed, um, proposed ground floor, 
There's the drawing I've got. And if I go into the viewport and do class from the navigation, sorry, from the object info palette, and again go for T for text and specifications, I'll turn it off there. And also I will go back into classes for that and do the arrow as well like I did before and turn that off and press OK. So now I've changed the aspect of the drawing quite easily by just taking off some of the classes to remove some items. And if I go back down to the proposed ground floor, you can see it's still there. I haven't touched that. All that's happened is that the proposed ground floor has been altered independent of the main design sheet. Now this is an extremely powerful tool and goes a long way to getting a lot of the um, BIM um, modifications set up in drawings where you can actually modify um, a drawing quite easily and just copy and paste um, a design uh, viewport and just turn off some of the classes to create a new drawing. Like say if I wanted to show the foundations on this. Well I have actually shown the foundation line on here. Maybe I didn't need to do that because I was doing an internal layout or something like that. So I can turn the beams off and I can turn the foundations off and easily get uh, a new drawing out of it without too much work. So there you go. There's class. Um, the first things that you do when you're actually um, drawing is obviously like picking up a pencil when you're on the board choose which pencil you're going to draw with therefore you choose the right class now let's just get rid of that and don't save it now we're back to my untitled 2 with nothing on it and there's the page layout that I've got now let's do something here let's think about what we're going to draw I'm going to draw a wall and I'll go down to my wall components and I want to do um, existing brickwork outline and there's my pen already set up um, I don't need to think about it and if I then press that and go across and do a drawing there is my wall line already done if I go over to the object info palette it's already set up well the class is as I chose it happens to be on design layer one uh, and I'm in layer plane rather than um, sheet plane um, screen plane and I'll go into that one in a bit more detail later as they say but that's how you draw and say for instance sake I want to draw an infill well I've already got one set up let's have a look down at um, let's have a look down at walls again and let's do um, an existing brickwork infill which I've already got set up and just to make things easier I'm going to do that and as you can see there brickwork infill oh sorry blockwork infill already done out for me um, and it's very easy to do. So there you go. Class, a means of identification, any object that you either put on or draw. And that also means any symbol that you use. If I go into my resource browser and say I use a tree, and let's have a look down here. Trees one meter. Um, and I can put that onto my drawing. Oh, it's which, what am I using? Untitled 2. Let's cancel that. Another useful lesson. I'm actually drawing in Untitled 2, so I'm using the correct um, symbol library. And there we go. It's put it on. And as I'm drawing in um, a new drawing, I've not yet changed the, the scale. So I'm still at 1 to 1, so that's why it became huge. But what I should be doing here is even when I place something onto the drawing from a symbol, I should place it in a class that doesn't conflict with anything else. Now I've placed it under new wall block infill, block work infill. So what I should be doing, and it does happen, I do forget sometimes, I should go into the class symbol, go down to tree, and look for something that allows me to place that particular tree in there. Now I don't have anything um, other than live that I want to use and I don't particularly want that one because I use that for something else. So before I go any further I will go into organization, I'll go into class and let's just have a look at trees. Have I got anything there that would be ideal for me? No. So I'm going to create a new class I'm going to call it tree 
dash placement and I'm going to edit properties after creation and there we are tree placement I'm going to use it at creation I don't want any fill to it I only want a solid line and I'm going to call that line white because I don't particularly want to see anything there it doesn't matter it's just the class that I'm using and it doesn't matter about the line because you can't see it so there we go okay I've now got a tree placement class all set up so what I'll do is make sure that I've only got that tree selected I'll go into the object info and the class segment and just come down to tree now because I put tree dash and then placement on there it's gonna make it easy to pick up now where is my placements Mm. there it is so it doesn't matter what else I do or turn off if I want to turn off the tree then all I've got to do is to turn off the placement and everything will go but it's not being corrupted by any other class like the cloud layer or the trunk or anything like that because sometimes when you use classes like that you suddenly turn off the trunk because you say you don't want to see it and all of a sudden your whole symbol's gone because you've got the wrong class associated with it so always think not only is it the line but also the object that you're placing should have the correct class for it I hope that's clear give me a buzz drop me a line on email or Skype if you want any more on that one cheers